It could be the future of farming during our extreme drought. How a local farmer is getting his crops to grow with very little water. Live from the CBS Broadcast Center in Los Angeles, this is CBS 2 News This Morning at 4.30. And it's farming without all the water. Stephanie shows us how a local farmer is able to grow all of his crops with 90% less water than other farms. Yeah, that was a really fun story to tell. I can't wait for you guys to see it. All right, let's switch gears now to talk about a story, very interesting story about farming. Now, with California in the middle of a severe drought, one Orange County farmer may have found the farm of the future. Look at how his crops are thriving with a very little water. Bees are hard at work buzzing around plants on a farm in Orange County. But it isn't just any farm. It's a hydroponic farm in the middle of the Great Park in Irvine. I would call us, in a sense, urban gorilla farmers. Eric Cutter hopes to revolutionize the way people grow their food. With Southern California in the midst of a drought emergency and in desperate need of rain, Eric says his method of farming is water and land conscious. This farm here came out of the idea that 21st century farmland might be cement man-made surfaces. You see the weed mat, that mimics asphalt. This farm could be built in any parking lot or a schoolyard or any empty space that nobody's using, so they grow faster. It grows about three times more plants and 50% less fertilizer. The farm is divided into two parts. Hydroponics, meaning a way of growing plants without soil, and also by using organic socks. These are long tubes of recycled sock material combined with a drip irrigation system to save water. So if this is the way to go, why are there still soil-based farms around? This isn't, this isn't the, the global solution. This is a urban solution. I would call this a great supplement. Um, if food has to travel 1,500 miles or even 500 miles, it's going to be three to four days old. Therein lies the problem. Eric's goal is working with chefs to get his food into local restaurants and to turn Alegria Farm into a supermarket for area residents. When people come in here, for example, to the farmer's market on Sunday, they come walking over and say, hey, what is this? And I said, this is a farm. They, they're, they're fascinated with it. We start telling them what's in the food, how they can grow this in their own backyard, and all of a sudden we've got families piling in here. I've got beets, onions, two different types of lettuces here. With such nutrient-dense food at my fingertips, fresh spinach, I had to take a taste test. It tastes completely different than a bagged spinach. You're going to be the first reporter that's ever eaten arugula flowers on camera, I promise okay. you. Down the hatch? Down the hatch. It should taste a little nutty. Wow. Okay, so what would you use on this mildew here? Maybe a little bit of the... Uh, baking soda and a fine mist. The idea that we can take and repurpose land and grow food on it is huge. It, it could be the paradigm shift in agriculture that we're looking for. Mm. We're laughing because Rick just said, she'll eat anything. Yeah. I will. They were tasty. All right, well, before you saw that story, you may have only associated the word hydroponics with growing marijuana. But as you just saw, hydroponics can be used to grow many other plants, and it's very easy to do in your own home. Very interesting, this is, isn't this it? Is interesting. Terrific news, now, but but can't really be done on a grand scale yet. Not mass produce, not yet. Mm -hmm. But that may be the way of the future. Wow. But urban, it's an urban solution. Yeah, as you just said. Can you describe the taste of that of that spinach? It and then that flower so, as well. So much flavor, so much flavor, night and day from the bagged stuff. Really? I've never tasted anything like it before, I'm being perfectly honest, and the best mm. strawberry I've ever tasted. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm.